Okay, welcome to this video where we can show you how to use your own um, old desktop or your old PC that you have been sitting there for in your desk for a while and uh, you want to use utilize it to create your own uh, cloud-based storage and your own uh, video streaming service. So before we go into the details, I'll show you how to, um, I'll, I will talk some uh, some of the basics of the FreeNAS, so these are the highlights of today's video. So you'll have, uh, we'll talk about the concept of FreeNAS, what's FreeNAS, and then we'll talk the basics of the FreeNAS, and uh, I'll show you how to use FreeNAS and turn into your old PC into a server, then we'll show how you can set up the FreeNAS server uh, into a medium streaming service and then I'll show how to use your FreeNAS and set up it as your personal cloud storage and also uh, as bonus I'll show you how to use your FreeNAS and add an external drive with the USB port and then you can uh, uh, virtually increase the size of your server okay so if you are uh, not interested in uh, the basics of this thing you can skip this uh, next part and then go directly to the tutorial where I can show you uh, how to use your old PC and create it uh, into a server. Okay, so what is FreeNAS? FreeNAS is a web uh, operating system that you can install into your old PC which will uh, uh, act as a server and then uh, give you all the services. Now, uh, in this uh, slide we can show, uh, we see that you have an old PC which we will set up as a FreeNAS server this PC will act as a server and connect to your Wi-Fi router and then through your Wi-Fi router it will give you services to your smart TV, to your laptop, to your smartphone, everywhere. So essentially you will have a free, um, well not free, you uh, of course pay for the electric bills but you'll have virtually a free server and you can uh, access all these premium um, services that you can get uh, from Google Storage or maybe um, Dropbox and uh, Netflix and other stuff, so Amazon Prime Videos and these type of things. You can set it up all of these things into your personal PC and um, get the services. Okay, so the way the FreeNAS operating system works, FreeNAS, uh, you know, when you install your FreeNAS operating system into your old PC, it will uh, create your own FreeNAS server. Now, the way the servers work is that it have lots of plugins to do different kinds of um, services. So these plugins will give you, each of these plugins have some services that will, uh, you know, able to do certain things. So like the plugins for the video streaming, there, there will be a plugin for a personal cloud and so on and on. So, you know, here we can see the detailed uh, diagram of the FreeNAS operating system. So in every server or in the FreeNAS server, you'll have a storage device. Now, in this case, the FreeNAS uh, operating server has a storage and inside the storage, you have pools. So what pools is, uh, pool are a collection of data sets when each of the data sets you can use for different plugins or different services. Now, these data sets, uh, essentially stores all of your data. Now, there's a, another concept in FreeNAS called jail. So, uh, remember that I talked about uh, different plugins? So, the way it works is that each of these plugins, kind of, you can think of their acting as uh, individual uh, operating system inside the FreeNAS server. They shared all the kernels with the FreeNAS server, but um, the file system in each of these plugins are different. So, the first thing that you need to do is that you need to connect your uh, storage of your FreeNAS server, which is the data set here, uh, to the file system of that plugin. Now, the way to do it is called mount volume. So you mount a specific volume or a data set to the file system. Of, like uh, in this case, you have a data set that is mounted to the uh, file system one of plugin one and then you have another data set that's mounted into the file system 2 of plugin 2. Now, you can also access these data sets uh, by, as a shared folder from outside of your FreeNAS server uh, using Windows SMB. 
So the beauty of this thing is, once you set up your server, you don't have to, uh, you know, manually use a monitor or a keyboard to access the server. So after you set up your server, it will sit there. It will not have any uh, display port or any kind of uh, peripherals like uh, mouse or window or, or keyboard. And you can access and control the whole server from, uh, remotely from your laptop or your uh, personal desktop. So that's the beauty of this thing. So uh, now you understand the basics of the FreeNAS. Now let me show you a detail, a specific version of the FreeNAS which we will use to for our purposes. So in our case, we'll have two plugins. The first is Plex plugin. Now this Plex plugin is for media services, and then you have Next Cloud plugins, which is going to be used for you know uh, a data cloud services. So as you can see, the Plex plugin is mounted to dataset, and that dataset can be accessed through Windows SMB. So what happens is that, suppose you have lots of videos, uh, movies and TV shows and whatever, and those shows, videos, uh, or any media, you can put into the dataset through Windows SMB, and then those videos are um, media files actually, that can be accessed by Plex through the mount volume and into the uh, from the file system one, and then the Plex will uh, render those videos to your you know desktop or TV from this uh, file system. Now, if you look at the Next Cloud, it doesn't have any shared Windows SMB folder. This because is that the Next Cloud plugin is a service for online cloud system. So. In this case, you don't need to have a separate shared folder system because the next cloud will take care of the whole thing. So all you need to do is, you know, create a dataset and mount the volume to the file system too, and then next cloud will take care of all the rest of the things. So now I'll show you the basic steps to setting up a media server using Plex. So first you need to create a dataset, then uh, you have to set the permissions for the dataset, then you set the Windows SMB sharing for the dataset so that you can put your media files or your movies, uh, your audios and other uh, TV shows into that dataset and then you install the plugin, the Plex plugin which uh, you have to connect the Plex plugin with the dataset so that the Plex can access your files through this file system uh, and then render those videos to you. And then you have to, in the last step, we have to show you, I'll show you how to use, set up the Plex so that you can actually see the videos. And in the case of Nextcloud, it's uh, similar, but there's some kind of, some twist in here. So first thing you have to, you also have to create a dataset and then you have to create uh, the per, uh, set the permissions for the dataset and then install the Nextcloud plugin. After that, you have to connect the dataset to the Plex using, uh, not the Plex, I'm sorry, the, uh, <clears throat> the Nextcloud using the mount volume. And then this there is an extra step that you have to fulfill. So, you know, as the Nextcloud has its own data structure, so you have to, it actually essentially creates a database in, in and of itself inside its uh, container. So, to access the data uh, credential of the database, we need to find the credential of the next cloud's database and then use that to set up our admin, uh, uh, to set up the admin account and then you can, from there you can use the whole thing. Uh, it kind of seems uh, a little bit uh, confused maybe, but when I show you how to do this step by step, I think things will be very much clear for you. To begin our uh, uh, setup, we first we need the FreeNAS operating system image file, which we will use to, you know, set up our FreeNAS server. So, to do, to do that, actually, we'll have to go to the FreeNAS.org, download FreeNAS release. There will be a website here, and then you can click the download here, uh, which is the FreeNAS 11.2, which is a stable version, uh, and then you can set it up uh, as your 
food drive so okay so before we go there so I need to tell you something that uh, here it says that it requires a 64 64 bit CPU and a minimum of 8 GB RAM actually that's not true you can do this using a 4 GB of RAM and a pretty much old uh, hard drive uh, uh, I mean pretty much old hardware so don't worry about this uh, if you don't have HGB RAM uh, don't worry about that and if you don't have a 64 bit CPU don't worry about that either actually um, I can guarantee you that it will run all of the old hardwares but I have done it with a code to do uh, Pentium R hardware with uh, 4 GB RAM so there you go um, now after you download this freeness OS or the image file first you need to do is that you create a bootable disk drive using maybe uh, win ISO or uh, any preferred software you want after that you have this uh, freeness operating system uh, installation disk now use that disk and uh, install the freeness operating system into a uh, USB stick the reason I'm uh, preferring USB stick because you know the whole operating system will take um, maybe 10 to 16 gigabytes of space now if you have a big bigger drive a storage drive like suppose a one terabyte drive uh, you don't need the whole drive to be your operating system so well what I prefer is that you use a USB stick and then boot up the freeness operating system into that USB stick and then uh, use your uh, actual storage for the server storage so we'll show that uh, in uh, very quickly how to do the all of those things okay so here we have uh, after you put into the system you'll get this uh, when you boot the live CD or DVD that you have burned and then you'll boot up your old machine you'll get something like this which is a free NAS um, boot system menu from here you press enter which will start the free NAS installer now there will be a uh, lots of uh, text here don't get um, intimidated now you'll get here where you can select uh, one of four things so you have install shell reboot system and shutdown system so first we'll install and then we'll give you the it has less than recommended 8 GB of RAM but don't worry about that so you just continue then you have two drives as I said now here we have uh, this one I created myself so the second one here the ADA one this will be your main drive suppose this is your main drive which is like 500 gigabytes or maybe one terabyte so we don't use that we use the first one which you know is the pen drive or your splash drive where we can install the whole operating system so we use the space bar to select this and then enter to say it's okay so now here you say uh, installing on a flash media is preferred so actually we are doing this but as this is a uh, virtual box so it's not recognizing it as a flash drive but in your case you will find it that when you install the operating system into a flash drive will not get a uh, warning like this that saying installing on flash media is preferred anyways let's move on now here is the important thing you will have to create your password for your root so now you are the owner of this server so your name would be root r o o t now here you can create your own password which will be used in the future setup of the whole server so please be careful of you know setting the right password here so we'll say one two three four you should give a stronger password than this one, three, four, and then you say okay now here are two of the things so first if you have a very old system using legacy uh, drives so then you should boot via BIOS but if you have a system that's fairly like you know after 2011 it should be uh, uh, boot by the boot via UEFI so but if you have a system like suppose uh, 
from 2005 or maybe older or maybe 2010, you should use boot via BIOS option. So we will say boot via UEFI. Now we have to wait for a while before you know the whole system installs the FreeNAS OS into your device. Okay, as you can see here, uh, the FreeNAS installing succeeded. Now we have to press enter and remove the media and then the system will reboot into the FreeNAS OS. Okay, you have installed the FreeNAS operating system now and you reboot it into the original FreeNAS operating system. Now you press enter to boot into the FreeNAS and it will take a little bit of time to fix everything. Okay, after the installation completes, now you have uh, reached to this menu where you have the console set up, you have a bunch of options, and in the end you have a URL or IP address which is http colon double slash 192.168.56.101. Now, at this point you can disconnect all the keyboards and all the peripherals from, from this server and uh, you can also disconnect the desktop, uh, the display by the way. Now the whole thing will run from now on a standalone thing. So you don't have to you know, touch this uh, server physically from now on. All you need to do is to log into any kind, uh, from any other laptop or you know other PC, you log into that IP address and you can control the whole thing, everything onto this server using that IP address. A bunch of options you need to know about uh, <clears throat> here. Uh, one of this is number seven, which is a reset the root password. You remember that we set a password when we installed FreeNAS operating system. Now, if you want to change that password, you can use uh, this option to change the password to any other strong passwords and other two options are number 10 which is reboot so if your system or the server is having problems or it's overheated you can start rebooting the whole server also you can use the number 11 to shut down the server if you think the server um, got uh, any problems for any other reasons like if your network uh, the power failure or if your Wi-Fi is disconnected or anything else so, but if everything goes right, you don't need to touch the server physically ever again. So from now on, we'll switch into a personal desktop or a personal laptop from where we will connect to this server remotely using that URL. Okay, here we'll try to connect to the server. So you say HTTP slash 192.168.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
server connection was 56 so I'm sorry so this should be 5611 <clears throat> and now you can see that we are connected to the freenet server now we have to log in first in order to change the server so the username by default is root the password you put the password that you have done using uh, the same password when you install the operating system so in our case it will be one two three four okay now we are inside the server and you can change everything of the server from here uh, the first thing we need to do is to go into the legacy web interface you put the same credentials okay now we are uh, the initial wizard has been started so We'll select the English uh, as language. The, everything else is fine. The time zone, I live near Chicago, so we'll select Chicago. Then click Next. You have to create a volume name. This is the storage name where you put all of your files. So suppose we'll say example. So you can see here uh, it detected the external hard drive which in our case is six gigabytes now you have uh, you don't have to mess anything up here now here so this is for Windows SMP or the sharing uh, configuration so we'll say the share name would be example it should be Windows SMB we don't need to allow guest um, now you click add so the, it is added here and then click next now you have console messages uh, we don't need to have any <coughs> email routing or any kind of email uh, notification from the server so just click next and then just say confirm now the system is setting up your volume okay the volume has been set up now you collect storage and you can see that there is a disk here uh, you have the storage here so if you click volume manager actually you already added the volume so you don't need to do anything here click sharing so you have to click Windows SMB and the Windows SMB is already added here now click services and see if the SMB is running so if you have a smart device which uh, or a hardware which enable up smart you should start the smart option so that your hard drive is safe and you can know when the hard drive is failing okay after the uh, wizards have been done then now you have um, if you go to the storage now you can see you have a volume here for example and if you go to the sharing and uh, Windows SMB then you have a SMB here now on the left you see also you have a sharing uh, drop down menu and in there you have a Windows SMB shares inside that you have example if you click on the example you can see the path where the actual volume data set is and now you have the name for the uh, whole data set and now here is one option it's called uh, allow guest access now if you cannot get into this uh, folder from through the sharing networks of the remote desktop that you can actually check this and allow the guest access so that you can directly go into the 
shared folder without putting any password or your username. For now on, we don't we keep it unchecked and uh, we try to get into this uh, folder from our remote desktop. To see your folder into the remote desktop, first go to my PC, then click on add network location. After that, you'll get this wizard uh, at network location wizard. You click next, click on choose a custom network location. Now type your IP address here 192.168.56.101 and slash example, which is the name of our pool or the data set. Click next. And now, uh, depending on your preference, if you have set the allow guest user on, you don't get any credentials or you don't have to give your password or the, the, what I mean that you don't have to give your root password. Uh, but if you have uh, checked the guest allow guest access, then you will directly come to here where you, uh, you know, where you can connect it to the network and you just give a name for that example folder. Click next and then click finish. You will get into 